Hello everybody, this is Jurassic Adventures, and today's video, I will be repainting this Camp Cretaceous Sinoceratops, but here's a twist, with only brushes. So usually I use the airbrush in my repaints, but now I'm just gonna only be using brushes like these. So this is probably gonna be more of what uh, the average repainter will be using, uh, and so I think I should do a little bit of like a tutorial type video and just uh, show you some basic brush um, techniques and stuff that can help you get into really nice uh, repaints. Oh, I got the Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous Soundstrike Sinoceratops, and this is one of my favorite figures of 2020. And uh, we're gonna be repainting it like one of the different variations seen in the show. But let's just unbox this real quick. So the first thing you probably want to do uh, when doing a repaint is kind of clean off the figure a little bit. You could probably use a baby wipe or something like that, a wet paper towel maybe even. Uh, but what I'm going to be using is just some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe it down. And what this will do is help the paint adhere if this has been played with a lot or it's been touched a whole bunch. The next thing I'm going to be doing is priming the figure. Now I'm going to be using the airbrush uh, with just some sand flesh uh and i mean this is the only step i'm going to be using the airbrush on just because it's easier and that's what i have but you can also uh use the spray can primer or um just paint a base coat over it The primer is now dry, and so what I did is I mixed up the sort of base green color for the Sinoceratops, and I did this using this um, Skyline Blue, this green, and then a couple other colors just to make it uh, sort of toned down. So when you're mixing colors, you definitely want to watch out and like look at the color and then look at what you're trying to replicate. So I do got this uh, green coat all done on the figure. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this sort of gray tan uh, underbelly tone. And so what we wanna do with that is we're just gonna dry brush it on. So uh, you just wipe some of the paint off the brush. And then just start brushing on the figure. So now that that process is done and it didn't take a very long time at all, uh, we're going to start transitioning this uh, gray color into the underbelly from the green. So we're very lightly just dry brushing a little bit of that gray and just kind of fading it together to make a nice smooth transition. It's a lot harder to do transitions without air. So the sort of grayish tan underbelly tone is done. All the transitions are looking nice. Again, very, very light dry brushing, and I use this uh, bigger brush. Very, very light for the legs, just to go over it and make it a little bit more in line with everything else and not as a harsh transition. And so now we can start moving into the other dry brushing details on the main body and everything. The next step will be dry brushing over this uh, Sinoceratops, the green color, with just a lighter variation of the base screen. So what that will do is highlight some of the details and make it a little bit more interesting rather than just having it uh, one green color as it is. Same technique as the underbelly, just use dry brush and we're gonna go just over that coat and highlight some of those details. going to move on to a darker tone and some of these little shadowy areas. All right, so I'm done with the main dry brushing on the body. So now what I'm gonna do is just do some little accents and a little bit more of a green hue of that same body tone, just kind of picking out these large scales that stick up on the model. And I'm just going to dry brush over them with this green being a little bit more precise, trying not to get it everywhere. And that should highlight those, make them a little bit more colorful.
Now that the greener tone is done on those larger scales, we will be moving into a little bit more of a bluer tone. Just get more color variation on there. And because this is just a base uh, green color for the majority of the body, it gets a little bit boring. So just something to mix it up a little bit more. And again, we'll just be picking out some of those and just uh, brushing on there. Now that most of those body details are done, we can start moving into the detail on the head. So the first thing I will be doing is I'll be doing some of these side head patterns with a smaller brush using a sort of gray uh, tan tone we used for down here. And I'll just be continuing it up and making some sort of patterning. I'm just gonna demonstrate real quick how to do some of these smaller stripes. Now we can just kinda branch it off just very lightly these thin little stripes using the very tip of the brush to achieve this with that same sort of gray tan color I'm going back up here and I'm just doing these little uh, frail markings and we will be painting other colors over them but this sort of light uh, tan gray is a great foundation color for that now I'm done with all these grayish tan markings on the head and we can move into some of the other uh, finer detail patterning. The next thing we're gonna do is the yellow accenting around the white patterning on the frill. And for that, we'll just be using a fine tip brush and this lemon yellow paint. And we'll be going around the white outline with the yellow. Next color we're gonna do is this sort of indigo blue purple color I mixed up and that's gonna go in the center of the frill. So I didn't quite like the way the um, patterns on the frills look just being solid. So what I did is I took some of this gray tan we used for the underbelly. I just sorta, of, uh, I, I thinned it down a lot and I made it into a wash and then I applied the wash on there and then I took a Q-tip and I just removed the excess that wasn't needed. And what that did is it kind of put some of that gray into the cracks and it makes it look a little bit more natural and less um, solid, which looks better in my opinion. So this repaint's actually looking pretty nice now. And the next step we are gonna do is just uh, put a nice ink over the horns. This is transparent raw sienna, so this will make it a little bit more yellow, and then we'll kick the yellow back with the brown later. So what we're gonna do with this is just apply it on there, and it's gonna make it look a little bit more yellow and aged, which is always a good look on horns and teeth and whatnot. We're also gonna apply that same wash on the beak here. The ink on the horns is done, and it looks pretty yellow, but we'll correct that later with the brown. But what I did forget to do is I forgot to do the indigo and the yellow around these little markings on the frill. And stuff like this happens all the time in repaints, little mistakes and you forget to do things. The key to um, doing good repaints is just knowing how to recover from that and knowing how to continue. So I'm just gonna uh, do the yellow and the indigo, no big deal for this step. And then we can move on back to the horns. Now that I fixed the pattern on the Sinoceratops, we can continue with the horns. And so I'm just gonna use some dark brown and we're gonna dry brush it over the horns. A lot more heavy concentration towards the tip, but just dry brush the entire thing, but a little bit less towards the base. I'm also gonna do the nails the same dark brown color. And now the last final step we are gonna do with the horns is take this really dark brown and just hit the top of the horn here with the dry brush. And we're gonna do this for all the big horns only. Also just do a little bit over the nails. So now the claws and the horns are done. Only one last thing to do, the eye. So the eye is something a lot of people struggle with, but I'm just gonna make it real simple here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some uh, darker orange on this eye. She says almost like a base coat. Make sure your paint's nice and thin, but now that that's on there, we're gonna let it dry. The next part we're gonna do is the little pupil. So I got some black and just make sure it's thin enough and you have 
not too much paint on the brush. We're just gonna do a circle. Now, if you like how that looks and that was good enough for you, then this repaint would be done. But I like to get pretty technical with my eyes, so I'm gonna add a little pupil highlight and then even a light reflection, which will be in white on the eye. Next thing I'm gonna do to the eye is just add a little bit of brown in the center of the pupil. Here I got a tiny bit of white on the brush. And I just painted a tiny little reflection. Now it's time to seal this figure because all the painting is done. So what I'm gonna be using is some matte Mod Podge. So what we're gonna do is just go over and make sure the coat is pretty even on this figure because you don't want a lot of gloopy uh, thick stuff on there so just go over make sure it's nice and even coat and then we're gonna dry it up with the hair dryer while doing this you want as little white as possible because that's where it's starting to get thick is where it starts to uh, be visibly white so just kind of spread it out and so it doesn't get all thick and it doesn't build up which will leave a big white glue mark on your figure. Now that the matte Mod Podge is done, we're gonna move to the gloss for the eye. And so, same thing, just want a nice clear coat. Now that the eye is all glossed up, this repaint is complete. These techniques I showed in this video can be used in any repaint, so I hope this really helps you out in trying to start repainting or just improving on your current repaints. If you enjoyed this video or found this video helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. This is Jurassic Adventures, and I'll see you in the next video.